here uh, in this archive. Uh, the archive, as some of you might know, is part of the Central European University, um, which uh, the government, without wasting much time, expelled from Hungary. Um, but the archive uh, will stay. Somebody should stay, especially in the midst of a raging cultural war. And one of the main front lines of this cultural war, not only in Hungary, but uh, in most of uh, the countries similar to ours, is history. So a historical archive, which is an archive of, uh, an important archive of post-Second World War history, the Cold War, and one of the largest human rights archives in the world uh, should stay. And although we have been intimidated by the government, uh, I think we don't have to worry too much because um, the government is not really interested in historical documents. It is able to produce its own documents um, to justify its historical claims. So we are not interested uh, in a real archive. Um, allow me to read you just a few sentences because you don't have much time to waste either. So just a few sentences from the Hollywood Reporter uh, published uh, about a month ago on the 6th of November. The title is James Dean Reborn in CGI for Vietnam War Action Drama. This is an exclusive report. The cultural icon who died in 1955 will return to the screen via CGI using actual footage and photos for the film Finding Jack. James Dean, who died in 1955 um, in a car crash at the age of 24, is making an unexpected return to the big screen. The cultural icon known for Rebel Without a Cause and East of Eden has been posthumously cast in the Vietnam era action drama Finding Jack. Directed by Anton Erst, the project comes from the filmmaker's own recently launched production house, Magic City Films, which obtained the rights to use Dean's image from his family. Adapted from the novel, Finding Jack is based on, an, uh, on the existence and abandonment of more than 10,000 military dogs at the end of the Vietnam War. Dean will play a character called Rogan, considered a secondary lead role. We search high and low for the perfect character to portray the role of Rogan, which has some extreme complex character arcs, and after months of research, we decided on James Dean, said the director. We feel very honored that his family supports us and will take every precaution to ensure that his legacy as one of the most epic film stars to date is kept firmly intact. The family views this as his fourth movie, a movie he never got to make. We do not intend to let his fans down. While Finding Jack will be live action, the Hollywood Reporter understands that Dean's performance will be constructed by a full body CGI using actual footage and photos. Another actor will voice him." Un unquote. Now, you can draw two lessons uh, from, this, uh, uh, from this article. Uh, lesson one is that perhaps you can go home. Uh, you don't have much to do here. You don't, don't need to preserve films or moving images or images in general because uh, uh, James Dean can be resurrected, uh, Budapest at the end of the 20th century can be reconstructed um, by using uh, computer-generated images, so there is nothing to be preserved. The other possible lesson from this article is the opposite. It seems that they still need footage and images, at least uh, uh, by now, to reconstruct resurrect uh, James Dean for the movie. So we still need footage and image, so we have a lot to do. Now, we can choose two strategies. Um, one strategy is uh, the more the best, uh, the quicker 
uh, we try to preserve and digitize uh, the more documents we can in the best available quality, it's the better. In this way, we are able to save for posterity important uh, documents. The other uh, possible avenue is the less is the better. Um, the more we can try to um, disaccession, to get rid of, to shred all those uh, images which we consider to be less important, uh, more time we will have to preserve those documents which seem to be really important, which have historical value. Now the problem is how can we decide what are those documents which will have historical value in the future? How can we foresee what will be important uh, in times to come? Now, there is a definition about historical documents uh, which says that, uh, if I find it, um, which says that um, historical documents, and this is a definition, are original documents that contain important historical information about a person, place, or event, and can thus serve as primary source. Significant historical documents can be deeds, laws, accounts of battles, often given by the victors of persons sharing their viewpoint, or the exploits of the powerful. Uh, though these documents are of historical interest, they do not detail the daily lives of ordinary people or the way society functioned. Anthropologists, historians, and archaeologists generally are more interested in documents that describe the day-to-day -day lives of ordinary people, indicating what they ate, their interaction with other members of their households and social groups, and their states of mind. It is this information that allows them to try to understand and describe the way society was functioning at any particular time in history. Now, as you can see, these are two contradictory considerations. First, the exploits of the powerful, um, uh, the deeds, the laws, uh, the names of people of fame, and the other one is the ephemeral, uh, the Alltagsgeschichte, the day-to-day -day, uh, activities of ordinary people. Now, how can, how can we decide? Uh, how can we solve this, this conundrum? Now, fortunately, the National Archive of the United States came up with a solution. According to a document by the National Archive, uh, the way to uh, decide historical value is the following. Historical documents are those that are most likely to be stolen, those that would be marketable to manuscript collectors and dealers, particularly items with names, images, and signatures of notable individuals or a relationship to a notable event, example, war, disaster, of, or celebration. Illegal attempts may be made to sell such documents over the internet or through private uh, auctions or catalog sales. So probably the best way to determine whether a document has historical value is to try someone to steal the document, and if he or she is able to sell the document, uh, on the black market, then it proves that this is a document of historical value. Now, this is a complicated way to go for us. The conclusion is most probably that, especially uh, in the case of archives like us, uh, which are not constrained by uh, government guidelines and documents, it's up to us to try to decide what might have historical value in the future. In this sense, the archivist has real freedom. In this sense, it is the archivist who makes history, because it's up to the archivist to decide what will be retained, what will become accessible for future generations to learn about the past. So you are here with a real social historical responsibility and with the freedom and the importance of the archivist, and I'm really glad that a group of such important people are here. 
with us today. Thank you very much for being with us. Hi, good morning. Thank you, Professor Rev, for these uh, thoughtful opening remarks. Hi, welcome to Budapest, to No Time to Wait For. Yes, very much looking forward to these next couple of days. Um, for those who came to the Code Day yesterday, I hope you already had a really good start into the conference. On behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to thank the Open Society Archives um, for having us in this beautiful space full of light. And particularly, thank you to Zhuzha for making this all possible. But of course, thanks to all the sponsors. Um, without them, you know, we couldn't do this, but also without all the volunteers. So thank you to anybody who signed up to you know, print the programs, prepare the programs, do the live stream, welcome us all here. So thank you, volunteers, and to all the contributors for your time um, to create a really great program. Um, so yeah, as I said, it wouldn't be possible without you, and I'm just gonna like reiterate Joanna White's sentiment that I do think that the no time, no time to wait effect is in full swing, and I think that's great. So um, a couple of things. If you have not signed up for dinner, please do so. The dinner is tonight at 6 at Kol Kolovesh. It's not far from the official No Time to Wait For bar. Um, also, we had to split you into groups for lunch. You get the same amount of food and the same amount of time to eat. It's just for organizational purposes we had to split you. For those who are interested, while they're waiting for their food slot to tour the archives, um, we can accommodate 15 people today and 15 tomorrow. So if you're interested, see me or Zhuzha during the break, which is at noon. Um, and then I would like to remind everybody that we have a code of conduct. If you're interested in reading it again, let us know. We have printed copies. Please adhere to it. We will enforce it. Um, and then finally, there's a live stream. Hello, live stream. Good to have you with us, so please also contribute from home, um, which leads me to say that we have collaborative notes, so if you're taking notes, please share. And uh, yeah, that's it, so thank you so much, and have a great day and tomorrow as well. Good to see you all, thank you. Hello, hello.